So welcome back to Barry's Workshop. This is not a project video so much as it is a repair video. I'm going to repair my compressor that stopped working a couple weeks ago. What happened was I left the compressor running and when I came back out uh, the next day it no longer turned on. I flipped the switch and nothing happened. So I need to diagnose the problem and find out what needs to be replaced and get the parts and fix it. Danger warning. Danger warning. I do have to say that working on compressors can be very dangerous. Not only are there electrical components that you have to be careful with, but they're very high pressures and those pressures can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So if you're not totally comfortable with what all the components of a compressor and being able to manage those risks, please don't work on your compressor. But hopefully you're able to see that there's standard parts and once you understand how a compressor works and what all the parts do, then they're really not that hard to work on. But knowledge is power. So the first thing to do is to try to figure out why it's not working. Since it's not turning on or doing anything at all, I start with the pressure switch. And when I open it up, I can quickly see that this is where the problem is. The connectors here, you see one of the neutral, the white wires, is totally melted. And you can see also there's a lot of charring on the switch. This raises considerable concern for me. This, since this is the wire going from the switch to the motor, I'm going to get a replacement section of cord and replace those wires. So I've determined that the pressure switch is bad, and I went online to get an exact replacement, but they don't make it anymore. There's one that's made that's very similar that I can order, and it's about 20 bucks, which is a pretty good price. But I found this one that's only $10 more and it is much better made. So it, although the fittings are a little bit different, I'm gonna make this one work. So I'll go ahead and show you the differences between the two switches. The older one has a totally plastic case and the inside switch mechanism itself is totally plastic and little pieces of it falling out. Even the handle lever to turn it off and auto is plastic. And here's the terminal that melted. So this switch did last about 12 or 13 years since I got the compressor new. But since I'm replacing it anyway, it really just makes sense to use this uh, more robust design. So I'll go ahead and show you the new switch. The outside case is plastic. But once you open it up, you'll see that everything inside is metal. All of the switch mechanism and even the switch lever are metal. The only thing that's not metal are some plastic pieces that are there as insulators to make sure that the connections aren't shorting out. Uh, I like that it has screw terminals instead of the uh, blade terminals and even the contactors are more robust so this is just a much more solid design overall. As far as functionality both of these switches have the same features. They have the inlet for the uh, pressure switch itself and they've also got the unloader valve that's integral into the switch. And what that unloader valve does is it releases the head pressure on the compressor itself every time the uh, compressor cycles off and that's why it's integrated into the switch. So although these two switches look different and are made different, they still have the same functionality. So now I'm going to remove the cover off the electric motor itself, and I'm doing this for two reasons. For one thing, that cord between the switch and the motor is damaged, and I'm going to replace it. And the other thing is I want to look inside to make sure that there are no problems uh, electrically with the motor itself. And when I inspect it, everything's turning freely, and I can't see any signs of damage to the motor. So I'm going to replace this 14-gauge cord with a new section that I bought at the hardware store. This cord has three wires. There's a, a hot, a neutral, and a ground, and all three of them have a different way of terminating. The ground is screwed to the motor chassis, and then there's a blade terminal for the neutral, and the hot or black wire is soldered in. And there are some plastic retainers to hold all those wires inside the case. Moving over to the bench, I'm laying the new piece of cord next to the old one and then I'm just going to duplicate the wire length and the connectors as they were from the old cord. This is called a flag connector if you're ever looking for one. It's a 90 degree blade connector. 
here's a close-up of the motor. I actually cut that black wire and here I am desoldering it from the motor. And so now I add the new cord to the motor, just repeating the connections as they were before. Screwing in the ground connection and I'm tinning the hot wire that's going to be soldered to the motor. And when you're soldering it's very important that the soldered connections don't move around while the solder is still in its liquid state. If it does, that's called a cold solder. And that happened here, so I just heated it up and held it in place while it cooled, and that fixes that problem. And the last wire, the neutral, just goes on with that tab connector. And all that's left to do here is to secure the wires inside the motor housing. These last wires are held in place with a zip tie. I'm very careful here to make sure that all the wires are contained and nothing's going to interfere with the motor itself. And I put the cover back on. So now I'll go ahead and plumb for the pressure switch itself. The old pressure switch had a built-in T-fitting for the pressure relief valve. But since this one doesn't have one, I had to get a T-fitting from the hardware store. And just make sure it's snug and in the proper alignment. Then I mount the pressure switch. Uh, this is the only thing holding the switch in place, but this is pretty robust pipe and it'll be fine to hold the switch. Now for a compressor, you never want to use Teflon tape to seal the threads. You want to use a paste sealer. And the reason is you don't want little pieces of that tape to get in the lines and mess up your valves or your tools. It's very important to have a working pressure relief valve. Now this valve will vent air to the atmosphere if the pressure inside the tank uh, exceeds a preset threshold. So now that the pressure switch is in place, I can reconnect the wiring. This is the new piece of wire that goes between the switch and the compressor, and I'm reusing the cord that goes from the switch to the wall. And there are clamps on either side of the switch to hold the cords in place. The green wires are for the ground, and they go to the chassis of the switch which is also electrically connected to the entire compressor, so the whole compressor is grounded. And this is a double pull switch, so it switches both the hot and the neutral. And it's basically black to black and white to white. The last connection I need to make is for the unloader valve. And this is just a short connection of tubing that goes between the high pressure side of the compressor and into the unloader valve on the pressure switch. And I'm using some new copper and I've got a little tubing bender. It's just two 90 degree angles. It's pretty straightforward connection. It's actually a simpler connection than was on there before. Once the bends are in place, I measure it to length and cut it with a regular tubing cutter. This tubing will be connected with compression fittings a compression fitting uses a small ferrule that goes around the tubing and then a threaded cap that applies pressure to that ferrule. You never want to reuse those ferrules. You always want to get a, a new one every time you redo a connection. Otherwise, they'll never really seal right. It's not really a big deal. They're easy to find at a hardware store or your home improvement center. So as you tighten down on those fittings, that ferrule compresses down and will make an airtight seal with the tubing. Copper is a very soft metal and you don't need to over tighten these fittings uh, to get an airtight seal. They just need to be snug. So now that I've plumbed for the unloader valve and the pressure switch itself and also reestablished the electro connections, I think I'm ready to test it and make sure everything's working. And here you can see that the tank pressure is rising, which is just what we wanted to see. So good news, I was able to get my compressor working again. It didn't take very long to realize once I got in there that the pressure switch had failed both electrically and mechanically. I wasn't able to get an exact replacement, but in doing my research, I found one that was actually made a little bit better and hopefully will last long enough to outlive the compressor itself. 
Since there was some damage to the wiring, I went ahead and replaced that cord. And also since the pressure switch was a slightly different model, I had to reroute some of the, uh, the plumbing fittings. So I think I'm back in business. So thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the like button. And if you haven't already done so, I'd appreciate if you'd subscribe to the channel. Uh, this is one type of video that I'd like to continue doing. I find it very satisfying to uh, uh, fix broken equipment, keep it working. Um, but I also like doing woodworking projects, uh, wood turning, and I'll be we're doing a little bit more metalworking and welding projects. So I'm kind of uh, across the board. So if that interests you, hit that subscribe button, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it.